Hello everyone, how you doing? Swimming thing here, and today I'm gonna be talking to you guys about how to be a better S and D player or team. So on Modern Warfare Remastered, Search and Destroy, in my opinion, is the most fun game mode to play, and it's my favorite to play. And I just thought I'd share with you guys a few tips and tricks on how to get better as an individual player or as a team as a whole. So starting off, I'm just gonna list the things that I have for how to be a better player in Search and Destroy on Modern Warfare Remastered. So first I have, have a plan. So every round you're playing Search and Destroy, you should have a plan of what you're gonna do that round, and like what gun you're gonna use, what nades you might throw, things like that. Uh, next I have know the map. So you need to know the map, the layout of the map, and where people like to go. So a lot of this stuff applies towards game battles, 4v4 stuff, and the gameplay you're watching, it's a 6v6, but um, yeah, if you know the map, you know where kids like to play, it's like, a lot of the spots or places people like to play are pretty common across the board, so you can be pre-aiming those, you can be pre-nating those, just be aware of where kids could possibly come from or where they usually do come from. Uh, next is know your gun. So know the gun you're gonna use and know how to use it and this applies to more than just like like just knowing how to shoot the gun with like how accurate it is and stuff like that it's play your range right so if you're using an SMG and you're really except for the scorpion because that thing's a sniper but say you're using the MP5 the thing's range is not very good if there's a dude all the way across the map don't try shooting at him like you should know your range don't try contesting him, because if he has an M16, you're dead. Like, you're dead. So it's like, know your range and try and stay within that range. So don't get outside of your range. Don't run middle map with an SMG unless it's a really, really small map. Like, say, district, you should be fine. But other than that, I wouldn't, like, run, like, in crossfire. I wouldn't run down the middle with an SMG. You're probably going to get taken out. Next, I have, have good map awareness. So if you have good map awareness... You, you know what's going on, so like, know where people are, you see them shooting on the mini-map, you can pick out where you know those guys are, uh, know what nades have been thrown, what have been thrown at you specifically, so you know who's kind of near, if there's been, like in game battles, you can only have one stun, one grenade, so, say two stuns are thrown over by, you know that, you know that means two people are close to you or near you somewhat, so, that's a good way of being aware of your map. Uh, have good gun skills, so this kind of goes along with know your gun, but make sure you're good with the gun you're using. If you're using an MP5 and you just that thing just goes everywhere for you and you can't hit anything, it's not going to be effective. Now, if you're really good with the MP5, then use it because you're going to be good with it. Um, another way to have good gun skill or to have a better aim, I guess you could say, is to lower your sensitivity. So if you play on one, it's going to be... Nobody plays on one, but it'd be pretty easy to, like, make the slight movements you need to to put it on an enemy. Now, the higher the sensitivity, say you're playing on the highest sensitivity, it's going to be hard because you barely tap the stick and it just it moves you all the way across the screen. So, you gotta, if you have a lower sensitivity, I play on four. Uh, I know most people try to stick between, like, three and maybe six. I'd say three and five is what you want to stick between. But, yeah, the lower the sensitivity, the easier it is for you to aim. You can still turn on people, no matter what anyone says, you still can. Like, Optic Scumpy plays on... What's he play on? Three. He plays on three, so it's like... He's wrecking kids for days. So don't think that your sensitivity is gonna restrain you from still pooping on people. And another thing is pre-aiming. So pre-aiming pre is really good in this game because there's no quick draw. So pulling your gun up fast is not going to help you. You could hit fire, but if they're long range, then you're more than likely not going to hit them. So pre-aiming is a huge thing. If you're pre-aiming a spot and a kid comes there, about 90% of the time you're going to get that kill. Unless somehow you miss all your shots or something goes wrong, you get stunned, nated, whatever. You will get that kill about 90% of the time. And last but not least, for how to be a better player in Search and Destroy, this will be under the team thing too. Do not rush on defense. When you're on the defensive side, there's no reason to rush towards their spawn. 
Because they have to plant. You just got to sit back and wait for them to plant. Or you can just defend the bomb site. Like, if you're defending the bomb site, they can't get there to plant. And you'll be able to pre-aim. And you'll be able to get the kills. So, I wouldn't say... There, I wouldn't say you can never rush on defense because sometimes it's good to throw them off depending on how they're playing. Like if they play really weird and you need to do something to trip them up, then I'd say rushing on defense isn't an awful thing. But I just wouldn't suggest it every single time. So moving on to how to be a better team, uh, search and destroy team on Modern Warfare Remastered. Uh, once again, you should have a plan. Know what your team's going to do. Each of you say where you're going to go. So you have a good strategy of how you're going to play the round and try and win it. Next is to communicate. That's a part of having a plan. you got to communicate that plan with your teammates. Make sure they know what you're doing. And make sure they know what they're doing. And yeah, just have a good plan and make sure you communicate about it. Know where your teammates are playing. So if you know where your teammates are playing and they die, you know where the kid's coming from, and then they're going to call them out too. So if they give you a good call out, that's even better, but if you know where your teammates are at and they get killed off of, you can make a good guess of where the other kid's playing from. So use good call outs kind of goes along with this. If you use good call outs to let your team know where they were killed from, like, like say you got killed, you're playing Crash, you got killed bottom A. You say he's he's front A, he's in front of the A building, a person that's maybe playing uh, Bialy would be able to pick him off if he gets on top of the fridge and the barrels that are sitting right there. Uh, it all—it just all depends. Good call out to help everyone out. Um, here's another one. I kind of just started doing this with my team. We haven't really gone over them yet, but have plays. So, kind of sounds weird having like a play for search and destroy. Since it's not like a like it's not like basketball. You just have a play, but it kind of is in a way because. Like I said, you have to have a plan, and one of these plans can be a play. So, for example, one of my team's plays on Overgrown is my brother. I Okay, my team is me, my brother, my friend Jeff, and my friend Travis. So, what happens is we're uh, on offense, okay, on Overgrown. My brother takes the bomb. He uses extreme conditioning to get across the bridge, smokes bomb, then plants right away. I, with a sniper, sit on box towards the spawn and snipe their cross and let them know who crossed. My friend Jeff, he gets on top of Grandma's and sits a corner so he'd be able to see bomb and nobody's really going to look there. So he's not going to be peeking a whole lot on top of Grandma's. He's just going to be sitting there watching bomb. And my friend Travis will go into barn and he will hop out the other side towards rock so he'll be able to see if anyone's coming there tank. So that's pretty much our play for that. And if we communicate right... He should be able to get bombed down with no problem. He'll have Jug on. So he, if he gets naded, he probably shouldn't die. And yeah, so having plays is really good. Last but not least is do not rush on defense. As a team, you could do a full-out team rush, maybe trade the kills and win the round. But like I said, for individual players, most of the time, you do not want to be rushing. It's just most of the time, it's not the best thing to do. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was or if I forgot anything you guys think is useful, please put it in the comments below. Like if you did enjoy or if this helped you in any way. Uh, I'll be doing more videos on how to help you guys out in Search and Destroy and things like that. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Make sure you go into the description and check out my sponsors because they are awesome. And until next time, guys, it's been your boy Mang Thang. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you. Peace. <laughs> Thank you guys.